The science of converting is difficult to master. No two leads are exactly the same, which is why you should be asking these questions to lock them in. Hello world, I'm Mike Ploger, back again with Vizme, the marketing, design, interactive content, and everything in between platform that will change your life. And today, we're diving into sales, specifically the very first interaction between you and a potential client, the discovery call. What should you be asking during an initial conversation with the lead? Every question we'll share with you in this video will help you better understand their situation, their needs, pain points, and more. The question will help you build a relationship that's long lasting and profitable. But remember, a question is only as good as its asker. You must be a good listener. If so, you can provide the proper insight and follow up to convert that lead into a customer, which will also provide some tips on at the end of this video. Get out your pen and paper and follow along, shall we? The first question technically is not a question at all. I know that, but it's a great place to start in order to set the stage. As a matter of fact, the first nine questions we have are meant to set the stage and get to know the potential customer a little bit better to determine if they're a good match. And who doesn't love talking about themselves? This softball question is meant to get them comfortable in talking. You can gain valuable insight to steer the conversation as you see fit, and it helps create a stress-free environment from the jump. The next question that you want to ask is how decisions are made by that individual or within their organization. Please just keep in mind, you shouldn't be reading these questions off one by one. This is not an interrogation. Listen to each answer carefully, respond accordingly, then when the time is right, move on with the next question on your list. Understanding their decision-making process and any stakeholders involved will help you adapt your pitch and know who you should be making an impression with. This question breaks into the perspective of understanding their goals. This will help you devise a pitch that aligns with their wants. In turn, they'll be more likely to lean towards working with you and using your product or service. This question is similar to our previous one, but it looks a little further ahead while also remaining in the short term. And depending on your business, maybe it's only three months or even a little bit longer than a year. Depending on their answer, you can tailor your offer accordingly. I do encourage you to stick with the processes you have in place, but you can always adjust a timeline. Just don't offer a different product or service entirely. It's okay if the lead isn't a good match for you. How can you help anybody if you don't know the challenges that they're facing? Why are they talking to you in the first place? Again, it helps if you understand the problems they're dealing with and how you can provide a sustainable solution. A great follow-up to the previous question is asking what specifically is causing the issues. You know the challenges, but put their pain points under a microscope to understand the issue as best as you possibly can. You'll be better suited to position yourself and your product and sell it as a must-have. Our seventh question steps into the situation analysis portion of setting the stage. It's good to understand the current situation, processes, and solutions the lead is currently using. By knowing this immediately, you can assess how to improve their situation with your products and services. The eighth question will require prior listening to fill from their previous answers Dig deeper to find out if their current processes and methods of business are actually slowing them down and causing headaches. There's a good chance this leads to further reflection from the potential customer about their challenges and how you can help them. Question nine will help you and the lead see if there's been any missed opportunities in the scope of the issue. Can you step in immediately to provide value? Will your process take time to remediate the matter? You could have a big undertaking ahead of you if someone has the, had the problem built into their system for extended time. The 10th question on this list moves us out of the setting the stage phase and into qualifying the customer. A hole needs to be filled. That hole might be circular, but you offer a square peg. In other words, 
Just because it's more business doesn't make you and them a good match together. If you understand their decision making, you can decide whether or not they are likely to want to move forward with your product or your service. Everybody has a timeline to accomplish their goals. Some are realistic, while others are not. You don't want to step into a task that's impossible to accomplish in a short time frame, or vice versa. Take on a customer that's playing the long game when you're more focused on the short term. Identify their motivator and time frame to reach success. You want to bring up financial considerations, of course, but not right from the jump. That's why it's question 12 on our list. Wait until you have a good rapport with the other side before jumping into this. After all, the budget needs to make sense for both you and them. We now enter the final phase of our questions. Questions 13 through 15 start looking ahead, anticipating next steps. These may not even be necessary if you decide in the last phase that the lead doesn't make sense. Question 13 will allow you to create a competitive pitch. You can promote your product against the others they've used or the others that they're considering. They may not mention them by name, but gather as much information as you can so you're selling yourself as most valuable moving forward. What's the next step that they're taking? Will they take their time to review their options? This will tell you when the best time to follow up is. And better yet, you can even initiate the follow up by referencing you'll send them valuable information like insights, reviews about yourself, or further information. And lastly, the final question to make sure to ask is what steps and approvals are necessary to move forward? This will help you understand the implementation process and a potential timeline. From there, propose your service or product as the solution when talking about it so the customer can already start to visualize it. And you're done, folks. 15 basic questions to guide you along your discovery conversation with a potential client. But is that it? Is the work done? Of course not. Even once you find your client, there's steps to take to truly convert them from lead to active client. You gathered a lot of information on the customer's wants and needs during your conversation, but you need to go a step further. Research thoroughly to understand the ins and outs of their business. Not only will this be beneficial to you moving forward, but it will show them how dedicated you are to helping them find a solution. Next, you'll want to send them a personalized email thanking them for their time, summarizing what you've learned, and reiterating your interest. This is also your opportunity to show further value with any additional documents, resources, etc. Sell yourself here, don't go overboard, but use it as an opportunity to pitch yourself once again and how you can be exactly what they're looking for. Visme has lead magnets and email templates that are meant for following up. Why have an email consisting of nothing but text when you can spice it up with artistic design and data visualizations, further showing your expertise? Lead magnets and email templates are cool, but have you seen our proposal templates? You can create a detailed business proposal highlighting everything you discussed in your discovery conversation. How you'll address their challenges, your time frame, your tactics and strategies, anything and everything to further sell yourself all in one document. And it doesn't matter if you're an accountant, construction worker, or tech expert. Fizme has the proposal templates for all industries. Another way to make a positive impression, and perhaps your last, is by taking the lead through a demo, consultation, or other form of presentation. Make sure it is polished. It should be properly branded, clean, and professional. Provide more information on yourself, your company, the services you offer, previous projects and clients, and anything else to sell yourself. Again, this may be your last opportunity for the lead to fully understand how you conduct your business and if you're the right fit for them. And last but not least, if you haven't already done so, it's time to streamline your sales process with a CRM. Customer relationship management software has evolved, making it easier for you to organize your contacts, create action plans, 
automate marketing, and so much more. When it comes to improving your sales process, a well-managed CRM should be step number one. Ladies and gentlemen, that is all we've got. Dive into your CRMs now and find those leads. Then, once you do, you'll be all set with the questions and follow-up that we've discussed. Please hit that like button if you learned anything new today, and as always, if you want to learn more tomorrow, subscribe to our channel. Good luck, everyone. With Vizme, I'm Mike Ploger, helping you make information beautiful.